This week we're in Aurora, Colorado where we scored a beautiful campsite at Cherry Creek State Park. I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is what you'll see on this episode of Roaming with Rosie. In Colorado's Denver metro area, finding nice campsites with hookups for air conditioning in the summer is not an easy task, especially if you quit your job to go see the country. It means we're always on a budget. Our first choice when planning is always public campgrounds, whether that be city parks, county parks, or state parks. We don't usually fit in national parks and we boondock when we can, as long as we don't need to run the air conditioning. With a little persistence, we grabbed a spot at Cherry Creek State Park in the city of Aurora. The park is a little over five square miles and features an 880 acre reservoir where most types of water activities and boating are allowed. There's even a small marina and an event venue. The campgrounds sit in a more natural area surrounded by wetlands, prairie, and numerous trails. We enjoyed the huge amount of space allotted for each campsite. The summer camping season is April 1st until October 31st, and then there's reduced campground spaces available in the winter. Our site was spacious and we enjoyed just having the room to kick back without butting up against the neighbors. We had a full hookup 50 amp site for $41 a night. Basic sites with no hookups for smaller campers or tents are $28 a night. Not a bargain, but much better location and much less expensive than the area RV parks. There are shower facilities and a dump station available possibly because school had just started in early September, it was very peaceful all over. We caught up with our friends in Golden, about 30 miles northwest of our campground. Golden's downtown area is lively with cute boutique shops, bars, and restaurants. I really enjoy the historical buildings that have been renovated, but not demolished, to keep that charm of the past. Smile, you're on camera. In the basement up here? In the basement of the Buffalo Rose is a swimming pool. So on this spot, Jolly Ranchers were invented. This was the Jolly Rancher ice cream shop and they invented the candy to get through the winters. Clear Creek is the river that runs through Golden and it's developed with walkways, parks, and space for other activities. Looking downriver from downtown, you'll find a recognizable sign, Coors Brewery. Adolph Coors founded the brewery in 1873 and this location has grown to be the largest single brewing facility operating in the world. It's also where the aluminum can was designed and it's the largest aluminum can producing plant in the world, Rocky Mountain Metal Container. The Rocky Mountain Metal Container Company started the Cash for Cans recycling program. The core slogan for decades was brewed with pure Rocky Mountain spring water, and a portion of the water needed is pulled from Clear Creek. Some of the water also comes from aquifers below the brewery. 
Coors offers tours, but be aware that tour reservations are available 25 days ahead and do sell out. So if you're headed this way for that, you'll need to buy your tickets online in advance. Tickets range from $10 to $30, and there's a link in the description for more information. The Buffalo Bill Museum is located in Golden as well. Sitting above Golden's downtown at an elevation of 7,400 feet on Lookout Mountain Park, it's the perfect place to snap some pictures of the Rocky Mountain Front Range and the Great Plains. A short trail leads to several lookout spots and eventually to Buffalo Bill's grave. During this trip, we've been to Nebraska, South Dakota, Wyoming, and now Colorado. And so had William F. Cody, known as the larger-than-life Buffalo Bill with his traveling show in the 1800s. After seeing his home in Wyoming, it came as a surprise that he'd been buried here and the citizens of Cody, Wyoming would agree. However, he visited and performed in Colorado many, many times between 1850 and 1916. He died while visiting his sister in Denver, and his wife said it was his choice to be buried on Lookout Mountain. Despite all the arguments over this, I'm sure he would agree that the view here is spectacular. The museum was opened here by their foster son in 1921. Unfortunately, we did not have the time to visit the museum because we tried to fit too many places to see into one day. There's also a really well-stocked gift shop here and a cafe. It's not far from Golden to the famous Red Rocks Park and Amphitheater in Morrison. World-renowned stars of the music world regularly perform here, but it's also open during the days for free to explore the Red Rocks along trails, and it's also a National Historic Landmark. Jamie reminded us about the U2 concert, live at the Red Rocks under a blood red sky, that happened here in 1983. It was a rain-soaked evening, which combined with torches used as lighting created the red glow. During one song, Bono left the stage and famously climbed up a lighting rig to display a white flag. We went up all the stairs to the visitor center. There we learned about the 738 acres of this park, including the geology and animals of this area. 
We also learned about the phenomenon of this naturally occurring, acoustically perfect amphitheater. This natural theater was used for performances before the formal theater you see today was built. Capable of seating 30,000 people, tickets included a 25-minute trip from Denver by train. The theater you see today was finished in 1941 by the Civilian Conservation Corps, with the majority being done by picks and shovels. It's also home of the Red Rocks Hall of Fame, which was really interesting. Other events here include yoga on the rocks, snow shape, which is a fitness class to get in shape for winter sports, and film on the rocks, which is older movies shown in the amphitheater at a ticket price of $20. There's also a restaurant with a view. We continued into the quaint village of Morrison, which sits along Bear Creek, with many shops and restaurants that open onto the creek. We grab lunch at Tap on the Rocks, which we highly recommend. It's Ella Fitzgerald. It's Ella. Mm -hmm. Being in the Denver area in September is of importance for two reasons. It's my birthday month and my favorite way to celebrate is the kickoff of the NFL season and having hope in my heart for the Denver Broncos having a successful season. So planning to go to game two of the season still had me filled with optimism and bringing Jamie to a home game for the Broncos instead of attending with my lady Bronco friends was pretty special too. For those of you who have been to home games for your favorite NFL team, you know what I'm talking about. Before the game, parties are the best, and everyone is so positive, and the vibe is really fun. This game was even more special because it was the celebration of 25 years since the first of two back-to-back -back Super Bowl wins in 1998. Broncos fans, 25 years ago, the Denver Broncos enjoyed one of their most historic seasons in franchise history. So my favorite players were there and everyone received these awesome copies of the winner's rings. It was the first Denver Broncos game I've attended where they lost. I tried really hard picking the game against the Washington Commanders to go to, but we had a blast anyway and there's always next year. On our next episode, we're headed to Colorado Springs to visit Garden of the Gods, and we found a free place to camp for the night. Go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell. You'll be reminded to watch that video. If you like this episode, one of the best things you can do to support Roaming with Rosie is to click the like button and share it with your friends and family. Thanks for watching. See ya. Hey, Roamers, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Roaming with Rosie. For more information regarding this video, please check out the links in the video description below.
as well as products and equipment we use and recommend. We sometimes do receive a small commission when you use our links for purchases, which is a great way at no additional cost to you to help offset some of our production costs. Thank you so much for watching and sharing our videos and subscribing to Roaming with Rosie. We'd love to hear from you and encourage your comments and questions. Until next time, see ya. Thank you.